All right, guys. Well, I'm going to um, just give you a quick rundown of what I'm going to do with the 12 volt issue that kind of lurks with the shark. Since there's no main 12 volt system, yes, there is a 12 volt system on there. It's uh, it's a low draw system, and the battery for it's like tiny as. I think it's really only designed to um, run the basic 12 volt systems that the shark has. Um, the way I'm going to get around this is I'm going to um, install two of these iTech World. 100 SS batteries. Uh, I did opt for this instead of like a bigger battery. Like a, we've got a an iTech 120X um, Pro in there, which we could chuck one of those in as well with a with, with kind of like a battery box set up. But there's not a lot of room in the back of the shark, like in the end once I get my flat top on. So I'm thinking I'm gonna build something at the back of the, the ute, uh, sorry, back of the tray, where this is gonna sit kind of upwards. And I'm gonna have two of them, and we're just gonna link them with um, this 120 amp Anderson, so we'll just plug um, one end into here and the other end to the other battery. That's to link the two batteries together. And then I'll use a um, 120 amp kind of um, connector to run 12 volt to, say, um, my other accessories. The way I'm going to charge it is basically this will be plugged in, um, and then this end here on the ACDC we'll plug in to the the back wall um, where the outlet comes out and that basically means that any time that the shark is turned on the batteries will be charging at 40 amps an hour so being that these are 100 um, 200 would take uh, what 4 8 12 16 um, 200 so you know five hours I suppose that works out to be right so five hours to fully charge two batteries if they were to go flat and only while I'm driving. We could also force um, force these to charge as well if we just left the car on accessories, which won't even hurt the car. It, you could recharge these so many times over that the car doesn't need to move and it would have enough power off the main high voltage battery. Uh, I'll basically run 120s back to a, um, a panel where I can then plug in all my 12 volt, device, 12 volt devices, sorry, um, and my Starlink, which will be on the roof. That's one product. But um, also, so I can run, um, I'll have an Anderson port coming out the back here as well. So I can plug my caravan in if I want to do DC, DC charging for the caravan. Now, originally, I was actually going to um, run an AC, DC charger for the van. But I've, I've think thought about it. I thought if it's raining and there's water or just stuff flicking around, I don't want 240. AC running from here into the into the van through kind of this passageway here. And if something goes wrong and it short circuits, like I don't want to even know what, what that could what that could develop from that. So basically making a a DC system in the back um, will be good. Now I was only gonna put one battery, so just just have a think the back wall there is where I'm thinking the board will be, the two flat uh, slimline battery packs. The AC-DC charge, I'll probably sit on that as well. I have a cable from here that runs up. And that's pretty much, you know, I'll be able to run my 12-volt lights and everything like that. That's going to be my plan for now. And that's self-managing, which means I don't have to worry about it. It self-charges. Um, these batteries are also Bluetooth. They've got built-in uh, Bluetooth uh, capability. So there's an app you can basically monitor to see what your battery states are at which it negates me having put anything else in line. And I'm gonna make everything Anderson connection based, just to keep everything simple and easy. Potentially I could even put a TVMS Red Arc system in, um, cause they're only 80 amps, I think total board capacity, which is well within. But that gets me started on my 12 volt um, requirements. And that might be overthinking it, but I think that's the best right now for me to get away with what I want to be able to do. Yeah, and I've got uh, with Simpson Desert kind of developing around the corner. I haven't got a lot of time to think about all this. But if you guys have thought about this and maybe you've figured out a better way to do 12 volt high loads and you know, general accessories, let me know because I am curious about um, other options or other people have thought of. It actually, I should show you guys in case you're not familiar with the the battery, the 12 volt battery um, that's currently in. Oh, and guys, check out my new seat covers. What do you reckon? Uh, I had to do something, 
so and I got matching trim color with um, the factory red and black um, they're by global automotive accessories uh, gave them a bit of a hand to give them a demo vehicle to kind of size and fab it up this is even they've got a cover for here and it fits really well with the factory factory theme but I'll do a video on that um, down the track once I've had a good run at them this is basically where the 12 volt battery lays and it sits kind of under here um, nope not under there under here maybe I remember seeing this because I've looked at this before uh, here we go so it's a 14 amp hour a 14 amp hour it does say 60 amps draw I mean still 60 amps isn't a lot and they call it the the LFP starter battery. I don't know if you can see that on there, but you can't really run anything off this system. I wouldn't be connecting stuff onto the terminals um, and then utilizing it, that's for sure. And I did ask, and while I'm here also, I had someone ask if, with all the adventuring I've done at 4,500 kilometers, have I got any dust ingress? And it's clean inside. I've never cleaned under here. It's where the high voltage stuff runs into. Um, but yeah, that's clean under there, so in case it's of interest to anyone. But, um, I might get that started this week or next, at worst. And I'll try to show you guys how it all worked out. Just trying to think of anything else uh, to share with you guys. Not really. Um, uh, I will also, um, I will also do a couple more tests with the Shark. Uh, in relation to the recent traction control stuff that's all gone on that's made everyone break um because i don't think you guys realize how steep that hill is and i i also think a lot of you guys think i'm coming off the accelerator which i'm not um so i'll, I'll actually do that hill again and try a few other tricks that people have um reminded me about like turning off traction control and going into like an on-road mode and left foot braking might actually make a difference and it might actually prove that it's torque pulley. Um, it's, it's very interesting. It's just like you're driving, your foot's down in the accelerator and you're just slowing down till you come to a stop. It, it, my foot doesn't come off the accelerator at full, at, at full press until I hit the brake, which is when you see the brake lights come on. So I'm not slowing down. It's just not giving me the power. So it's something I really need to work out because it's, it can be dangerous off-road and it's not what I expected. So a lot of questions there we have to figure out. But anyway, see you guys in the next video. And yeah, pop your comments down below about the um, my planned 12 volt system.